In honor of Women's History Month, we've been talking with female leaders in sports, politics, business, and entertainment. And this morning, we are focusing on... Every Friday during Women's History Month... month long we've been celebrating women's history month by talking with female leaders in sports politics business and entertainment and nobody takes down angus snub number seven easy there's a reason why after 100 channels destroyed angus snub number seven is still here there's a reason why nobody want to get in a beat with Angel Snuck Nuck 7. If you don't take me seriously, and now your ass is barbecue.
We are in a state of emergency. Right, right. Want to show about it? Like the here? Here it go. Everybody who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rock has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cook was asking for, a change. It said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a release. Mr. Ebermott is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. The 
this is Dusty Basement Studios. We approve of this message. The Mississippi Campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Create an, an economy. Create and produce or anybody on the planet would want. You're fake, you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign. I want to end to assume that I'm a person looking to uh, get down with this Mississippi campaign. How, how does one get started with this? Sir? <laughs> Mr. Angel Stumpno. What was the question again? I didn't know.
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to this uh, evening edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm Angel Snub number seven, and it looks like we already have a guest in the house, our brother and our friend, Denzel Rogers. Let's give him a hand, y'all. Denzel back in the house, in the hazizis. How you doing, Angel Snub Nub? I'm all right, sir. Glad to see you. That's good, uh -oh. man. We got Soul Traveler. Soul Traveler says, love, peace, and so, 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 soul. All right. <laughs> Mellow, Mellow Cap is sending you the greetings there, Brother Denzel. Have a good one, Mellow Cap. Yeah, so. Um, man, I've been on this exercise program. It's been whooping me. <laughs> I That's feel good. better. I feel good, but it's whooping me because I will eat, and it'll start putting me to sleep. <laughs> you know, I'm already wore out as is, and then 
I eat something, no matter how little it is, it, it always it, it puts me to sleep. That's why, because normally I would rather have my live streams like at 2.30, 3.30 or something like that in the afternoon. But I said, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm too sleepy and too tired. Matter of fact, even right now, I'm like, I'm whoa out. I don't know about going live tonight. I should cancel this one. <laughs> but it's scheduled. It's scheduled, and we're going to do this. <clears throat> I did invite some other brothers, and uh, I let them in if they if they come. Uh, until then, what they say, the uh, the show must go on. So our topic for tonight is the importance of a strong black family. What is family? What is the origins of family? Where it come from? Why do we need a family? And why must it be strong? Does it make a difference if it's a black family? We have some questions here. We may or may not be able to answer. I'm going to try to do a little something. something. I ain't, I'm not the smartest person in the world. Denzel can tell you I ain't the smartest person in the world. I just give my little opinion and then I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And that's something you will not hear from a lot of platforms. You never hear them say, well, you know, I, I could be wrong. No, when they bring something to you, it's facts. This is how it go. You can bet your life on me. That's how they talk to you. I've been on YouTube since 2007. I've never came before the people and told you I'm a know-it-all. I've never come before the people and told you I'm some a righteous, uh, holier-than-thou type person. I don't make mistakes. And I never come before you. I'm just a little guy, your little brother, who's been around for a while, and I want to pass my experience and my wisdom to you so that hopefully you can become better than me and you can avoid some of the pitfalls and the holes that I fell in. The purpose of the elders is to help the younger people not go down some of the uh, non-beneficial paths that they fell in. Unfortunately, we have some elders that's foul. You have some elders they only looking out for themselves and they use their wisdom and they use their knowledge to enrich themselves. They're not looking out for the future. It's like in my lifetime, I'm very sure, I'm pretty sure that in my lifetime, I will have plenty of, of fresh water, even though it's foul, even though it's, it ain't all the greatest in the world. And this is something that many uh, these blackly black people don't talk about. We can't drink salt water. And all over the world, fresh water is dwindling. And the fresh water that you get, of course, as you know, is polluted, it's foul. So it's good for you and possibly you, you too also, Denzel, that we will live during a period of time, we plenty of water. You can go in and take a shower. Don't have to worry about it. It's fresh and clean. You know, you probably took a nice clean shower before you came on the live stream. Let me clean up myself. You know, go on the lot, hang up enough live stream, put on a little cologne, you know, dress up a little bit, you know. Yeah, you know, it's plenty of water for us. Okay. But what about the future generations? There, there's something, I believe it, it does come from the Holy Quran. But the Quran, it talks about how Allah warns us before there is punishment, before, before something bad happens to us. And we've been getting signs. Matter of fact, I believe there's a drought going on in California right now. For, and it's been going on for the last 20 some years. Most of us ignore, we don't trip off of it. And the water is between California and Nevada. And you know, Las Vegas is supposed to be a desert. So they are damming waterways and, and, and running pipes to places where water shouldn't be. But now with the drought, this reservoir is getting lower and lower and lower. Don't have no effect 
probably on us right now. But it, it's going to be. And California hasn't been getting water like it's supposed to. That's why all these fires continuously keep breaking out in California. And these fires are out of control. So as an elder, as a parent, the responsibility is supposed to be for us to look out for the next generation so you can have plenty of water. But we're not doing those things. What is black power without water? You got a drink. You can't raise a, a farm. You can't have a farm. You can't raise food without no water. Chickens need water. Cows need water. Plants need water. If you don't have these water, this 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 this, this water, you, you're done. And just recently, a few years ago. I remember there was a drought in Georgia. It got to the point where those counties in Georgia was really getting violent over the, cause you know, the water supply was getting really, really low. And I think it was Fulton County and some other counties in Georgia. They was getting ready, ready to like, hey, we're getting ready to go to court over this and get ready to fight over water rights. You know, when there's a plenty of everything, there's no problem. But when resources start to dwindle and see, this is a natural problem. Nobody can't make it rain like that. And some of our problem is man-made. Like when you go to the store and your favorite potato chips ain't there. Well, you know, this is it's a shortage. They don't have the can't, truck can't get there, you know, man-made type stuff. But uh, what are we going to do without water? And these type of issues the black conscious community, I've never heard them speak on things like this at all, period, never. These are important things because you need water to live. You need air to breathe. What's the sense of having black power when the air you breathe is giving you cancer? What's the sense of running around here talking about, well, you know, Denzel, I, I don't eat meat. That's that's graveyard food. I, I, I don't eat meat. I only eat uh, fruits and vegetables and only the organic fruits and vegetables. What the hell do, who cares about that when the air, when the air you breathing is polluted, filled with gas and all kinds of cancer causing elements. So what's the sense, okay, you eating these vegetables and even the plants and the ground, the earth that your plants is coming from out of is, is polluted. So what are you bragging about? I don't see why these people are bragging about. We have to clean this earth up because it's all we got. I don't know about Mars. I don't know about Jupiter trying to go to these planets. You can't go to them now if you could. So you got to clean this up. And this is what we have to have. Think about the future generations. And they're not thinking about it because these people, Denzel, you and I know these people are really, really selfish. The only thing they think about themselves and the now, they're not. They don't even have a vision. They can't even see into a future where they don't exist. That's why they want what they want when they want it. I want what I want now. I keep talking about, well, you know, brother and sister, we won't be here. I, I, I won't be here. I want mine now. That's the kind of attitude you have from a lot of these, these people. They want theirs now. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this for us. We're doing it for future generations. That's what we're doing it for. Like the revolutionary patriots who fought for this country, they fought for the future generation. Many of them never saw America. They died on the battlefield. And that's our, that's our function is to fight to make the future generations so they can do better, just like there were those who fought to make it better for us. We're so selfish, we're so selfish. But this also goes to show us the lack of family, the topic that we chosen today. We don't see ourselves as family. I don't have to be biologically connected to you to see you as my son. I don't have to do that. 
where is it where is it written that i can call a young brother my son but he has to be my biological seed from my dna that's what family is about let's talk about family uh brother to live is it did you try to you tried to hit the link, didn't you, brother Talib? I tried to get in there, but I was having major technical difficulties. Okay, if you want to, you can. Ain't been acting right since I've been trying to get on YouTube anyway. I guess it's just going through a little technical difficulty right now. That's all. Okay, well, so just. I just figured I'd just get on loudspeakers talk. Okay. It's fine. Brother Den Denzel is here with us. How you doing, Talib? Denzel, all right, yeah, peace to your brother, Denzel. Yep. Okay. Hope everything's going well with you. My bad, Talib. No, go ahead, go ahead. He just he wanted to find out if everything going good with you, our brother Talib. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Appreciate you yeah. asking, brother. Yes, sir. All righty then. All right, so we got the little social social stuffy stuffy out the way. Okay, all right. We're going to play Ring Around the Roses. I'm going to go first. Put my little tiddlywinks crap on the board. Then we're going to pass it over to Brother Denzel if he want to say something. He doesn't have to say something. He might just come just to give the brother some company. Then, of course, Brother Talib want to give his, um, his uh, commentary. All right. <clears throat> I want to say this. So when we think about family, we think about, and on social media, one of the most popular things that we talk about is male and female relationships. And we talk about single motherhood versus the two parent household. What is family? What is best for us? I wanna tell you, and I wanna begin this talk by saying, In the beginning, now I could be wrong, Denzel. You know, raise your hands. Hey, no, no, brother. Uh, -uh you're, you're you're incorrect. I, I I stand. No, stop that right there. <laughs> Feel free to cut me off because I know that you're into the sciences and things of that nature in history. I know that you're into that. So if I'm straying out there going somewhere where I shouldn't be going, please correct me. Or or you can even clarify if you want to, brother. You got me, brother Denzel. You there? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Life begins in the micro world, microscopic world. And when you look at the microscopic world, there is no family. You look at these one cell organisms and they run around going back and forth. There is no family. There is no one cell organism going to another are you my daddy? There's none of that kind of stuff going on. And, and, and that's how, this is how all of this started in the micro world. Just because our eyes can't see, it's all kinds of stuff going right in front of our eyes. We cannot see it. The eyes can't detect it. It's microscopic. Our body is made up of billions of one cells come together as one organism. So life begins in the micro, micro world. And that's where it starts. And it continues for a long, long time. Now, as things begin to uh, change and evolve, as they begin to change and evolve, we still have, we still have life right now. They're not in a family. Like bears, bears, bears don't live the family life. Male and female bears only come together to mate and that's it. Matter of fact, he'll turn around and eat his cubs. Male tigers do the same thing. They don't hang around with the family. Oh, that's my son, I'm, I'm so proud, come here little cubby. They don't do that. Male tigers hit and quit and go about their business. There is no family, the only family is the mothers with their babies and really that's not family because as soon as they get of age mama say you got to get the hell out of here because she's ready to bring in a brand new batch 
you too big. You go on, get out of here. She ain't interested. It's very rare that a lot of animals let their young hang around. Then you have something like a turtle. Turtles will never know their parents. The mama sea turtle come up on the beach, lay her eggs, she split. You're on your own. If the eggs hatch, they hatch. If they don't, they don't. She's gone. When the baby turtles show up, they don't know mother. They don't know father. There is no family. And that's life forms numerous all over the earth. A lot of animals live solo. So when you make mockery of somebody, oh, that's a single mother. Yeah, so, so what? There's a lot of animals. There's a lot of life. Where in the law do it say that I have to have a husband or a wife or a girlfriend? It can't just be me and my babies like the mama tiger or the mama, mama bear. Mama bear raised male and female just fine without daddy being around. I ain't never seen a homosexual tiger. I never seen a homosexual bear. And mama, mama tiger, mama bear raised both genders just fine. Now, here you are, you have a human being who's supposed to be the most intelligent on the planet. You telling me that the woman is not qualified in order to raise both genders. That's what you're telling me. She's too stupid, but she's the most intelligent on the planet. So, I don't get it. So, how do we get into family? Well, according to what I know of, of in biology, when we talk about family, it begins when life began to understand that life trying to survive is easier if I join with somebody else. Now, we just talked about the mama tiger, which is fine, but she could increase the chances of her babies growing to adulthood if the father hung around. This is the reason why many animals began to understand I can make it better. Our babies can make it if we work as a team. This is when the ideal of family began. Birds began to use the strategy. Insects start to use the strategy. All life on this planet, many of them, the most successful life forms on the earth are those in family units, those who have learned how to use teamwork. And some of the most successful animals on the planet are ants. You can find ants all over the earth, I believe, except Antarctica. They work as a team. And another Another animal that's been very successful for millions of years is the bee. And that's what I want for us. I want us to be like the bee. I want us to be like the ants. They live in a society. There's no big eyes or little U's. Everybody knows their role. My role ain't no better than your role. They understand that we have to work together or we all die together. That's their philosophy. Anything a bee do, he don't go around wondering, is that bee getting more than I am? They don't trip off stuff like that. And even though you call her the queen bee, they don't trip off of that. They don't, that's something that the men put that on, on that insect. That's just her job. And they all work in, as a, as a unit, because they all have a, have a chance to survive. So it can begin with two individuals or two parents. That's the beginning of the family. And we begin to find out that that's a better strategy so our babies can survive. But it gets even better when this family join with another family. And this is what you see in the insect world where there's a big group instead of two or three individuals or whatever, there's a big group. 
B life is a family life. And then when we talk about nations, do you know a nation is nothing but a big, supposed to be a big family? Of course, the black the black people would tell you, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, I'm not family in the United States. That's that's what it's supposed to be. That's what it's supposed to be. A nation is nothing but a big tribe. It's supposed to be a big family. Everybody is interconnected. That's what nations are. That's why some of these nations and some of these tribes are so strong and don't really allow others to come into their family because that's what it is, a family. I don't want these other strangers. This is my family. Bees don't allow other bees to come into their hive, even though that's a bee. And you ain't part of this family, though. This is my family group. That's why that's why a lot of animals act the way they were. And plus, it's about territory and resources and trying to survive and try to live. <clears throat> so we understand that family is nothing really. It's a strategy to survive. You don't need family. But of course, as you know, if you have family, it makes things much easier on us. In 2022, you don't need family because I have millions of dollars. What I need family for? I, I can buy a cousin or, or uh, uncle when I feel like it. I don't need family. Yeah, that's a fake family. So when we when we look at us as a people in this nation, one of the things that actually helped our ancestors to survive was their connection to family. That's what helped them survive. I'm surviving and I'm struggling because I don't want my children to be a slave. They thinking ahead. I'm living and I'm going to go through this and I'm going to do whatever I can to put my children in a better position than I am. And this began in, sl in slavery. Now, they denied our ancestors reading and writing. They denied our ancestors religion. But one thing that couldn't stop was our emotional, our being connected and wanting to be family. Matter of fact, that's probably one of the only thing that really kept us going was our connection to another person, whether it be our biological children on the slave plantation or another slave. That's what kept us going. Because you can talk to that other person. Man, Masa was tripping today, man. Eyes no, eyes no. Masa came here. When that woman show up, he gets to acting crazy, yeah. So, and then a slave that's in the house might be able to get that extra biscuit for you when you have these connections. See, when you're alone, you just on your, on your own, you can't do nothing. But when you have help, and somebody in the master's quarters, when you have help, you, you can't pick that cotton sack and you know you'll get a whipping. Another slave will grab it. I'll help you, boy. So you don't get a whipping by the master. These are, this family thing was a way to help us to survive. And during slavery, family don't have to be biological because as you know, we were being shipped from place to place. There's no guarantee your family going to stay, your biological family is going to stay together. So your son is shipped over here, your daughter shipped over there, your wife shipped over there. We keep talking about, or some of these people keep talking about, you know you're Africans or you're Aboriginal. You don't even know you are biologically connected to your people because we were shipped and flipped around all over the place. You don't even know if you biologically a part of who you claim that you are. You really don't know. Because what happens is if a slave woman, her children were shipped off somewhere, she would adopt other children on the plantation as her own. They would grow up and view her as their mother. And that's the way it would be. That's your mama. And those other children would be forgotten. And you know, we still continue that behavior way after slavery. I had an uncle, an uncle Jesse, 
They told me he, he was my uncle, Uncle Jesse. And I had my uncle, Uncle Mac and Uncle Dave, and Uncle Bartholomew. Then I had Uncle Jesse. Then somebody told me, that's that's not that's not your uncle. I said, what? He was Uncle Jesse was just a good family friend, been around for years. He grew up with everybody. He was just a good friend. And I was taught he was Uncle Jesse. And he had one arm. He, I think he was in the army or something. And he had one of his arm appetite. He had a, you know, one of those fake arm prosthetic. And you know something? I really didn't care. He was still my uncle Jesse. I don't care. You know, big deal. I, I saw uh, a commercial, a car commercial, and they was doing it. And the children was like, "We're going to see so and so and so and so." They said, "That's not your, those are not your people." And the children didn't trip off of it. That's what they was told. That's We're going to see so-and-so. But they're not biological. That's not your biological cousin. We still do that kind of stuff to this day. We adopt people who are close to us. That's my cousin. That's my uncle. Not even biological to you. We still do that to this day. We still have that kind of behavior. Just close friends of the family. But see, they, they family. It don't make any difference. And so when you talk about religion, and we was talking about Jesus, I think Jesus was asked the same question. Jesus was asked, you know, about his brothers and sisters. And he was like, you know, my brothers and sisters, my family is those who believe in the father. They have nothing to do with biology. In fact, most of us know that a lot of times people outside of our biology actually probably a lot of times better than the people that's actually supposed to carry your blood. We, we know that. So family doesn't have to do nothing with DNA. Now, when people talk about family and blood, a lot of times that's a vanity thing. Well, you know, uh, that boy's a Rogers. And his, his granddaddy was a Rogers and well, you know, was a Rogers and, and he, his son's going to be a Rogers, passed down the family name, which we know that these names that we have right now, they're not really our names. These was names that was forced on us as as enslaved people. They're not really our names. But we need to get out of this vanity thing because in nature, nature does not give a damn about Rogers or Johnson or Akbar. Nature only cares, are you going to live or are you going to die? That's the only thing nature cares about. Don't care about, that's a vanity thing. Because I guarantee you, there's a lot of names that have been on the earth it's gone, extinct. Don't hear about them no more. Especially when one people conquer another. The people, the species, the people will still exist. But that name is gone because the conqueror don't like it. We don't use that here. Not, not in our tribe. We don't do that here. You know, so we conquered the Rogers family. And now, now you're snup nup. Your last name is snup nup, not Denzel. Denzel snup nup. My family. Conquered your family, you're Denzel snub up. <laughs> That's how, and this has been going on for generations and generations. And we, black people, soul brothers and sisters, we are so connected and, such, and family is such a survival tool for us. I remember too, back in the day when I was growing up, our families were stronger. If you jump on one in the house, you got to jump on the whole family. You know, you roll up, you better come out here, Denzel. Come on out here. You better come out here. And then you come out. Yeah, come on. I got something for you. Then here come all these, your 10 brothers and six sisters and the dog and like, what the hell is all this? Now the family don't even know what's going on. You might be in the wrong. Uh, They're going to have to deal with that later. We got somebody, we got a family member, member under siege. We used to be like that back in the day. In our communities, we was more family. I don't have no sugar at the house. Somebody here that you don't have no sugar in the house? Well, I don't have a lot, but I got some sugar for you. Here you go. Make that cake. Feed them children. That's the way we used to do a little bit back in the day. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that uh, black people holy and righteous, and we, we just so good to each other. That ain't never the, the fact. But 
there was a time where we did better than what we're doing now. We're so materialistic and greedy and selfish now. It's just family don't mean nothing no more. It's about me, what I want. What can you do for me? What I got? That's what it's about. It's, 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 it's so selfish. But you know family meant a lot to us. And we saw ourselves as family. Now, I don't know about other people on the earth, but I know here in America, among us, we started calling each other brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. A brother and sister, that's family. That's part of family. We see a family connection. Where did we go wrong? What happened that broke up that, that connection where we saw value and love for another person like ourselves. Well, of course, some people would say integration. If it wasn't for Dr. King and that integration stuff, that's what happened to us. And and they took them, they took the man out of the uh, out of the household with that welfare. That's what happened. If you connect it like that. Those things couldn't affect you. You was like that anyway. When the floodgates opened for integration, if that's how the people was, they would have just stayed where they was at, but they didn't because they always wanted to come out of there. They was given a chance. The only thing that stopped them was Jim Crow. The only thing that stopped them was these laws to separate. Dr. King didn't have nothing to do with that. The intent of the civil rights movement was to, for simply justice. That's all they wanted to. But of course your enemies took it and flipped it around and they saw the advantages in opening up instead of having separate but equal. Because separate but equal makes you more independent. But integration now makes you dependent. And you don't even understand or comprehend how important it is to do as much for yourself as possible. You don't, can't even understand that. So you know, these folks go ahead. That's why we blow our money. And we don't care too much about nothing. Cause, and even the black power folks talk all that crap. You know, I was we just talking about uh, water. Don't worry. You know, somebody is going to handle the water for us. You know, they, they got to worry about that. Why are you not talking about it? But it's about survival. And I want to say this in, in my conclusion. One of the best examples in the natural world that I can see, and, and it's even talked about in the Quran. This insect is given a whole chapter in the Quran. The chapter called the bee. I think it's chapter 52, I believe. It was one of my favorite um, chapters, the bee. Because bees can get bees get down. Bees live in a society. There's no, there's no money. Everybody is equal. When the when the bee comes out of the uh, out of the out of the the cone or whatever it's called, they just find their place and get to working. We can actually have a society where we don't need no money. What you need money for? We can we can live in a society where whatever we produce, everybody can have. You want TVs? We produce TVs, everybody have a TV. We eat corn, produce corn, everybody get the corn. But no, my corn is organic. It costs more and the average person can't afford it. We love class, I know I, I, I can't live around those, those people because uh, I'm better, see, I'm, my family is taller. See, that family over there is short. I want to be around tall people. We all caught up in all this this, this foolishness. But again, the key in nature is why did animal life begin to adopt the strategy of family to survive? So if the black man and woman, soul brothers and sisters in this nation, if you're not surviving too well, maybe it's because you have not adapted the strategy of family. When you begin to adapt the strategy of family, I can guarantee you 
your whole life, your whole existence would begin to change overnight for the better. Because these little groups all divided up, the way we're doing now, it's not never going to go nowhere. I don't care how good you can talk. I don't care how many businesses you do. If we as a people don't become a people, if we don't become a family, ain't nothing coming. So those who are family will easily take us out. And that's what we've been saying throughout the year. Pretty soon you're going to have Ukrainians going to be taking us out. Because they see themselves as family. They see their connection. They are, they are, they, they are solidified in themselves. But I'm not mad at you. Was that Tupac said? I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you because I understand that we're coming from a slave mindset. And we don't understand these things. And those who do understand, you're so selfish. It's about what you want. Look at those people in Ukraine right now. You think all of them really like each other, whatever, before the war, whatever? That's not, this is family. Russia is attacking my family. This is my nation. So even so, Billy Bob and Junior in Ukraine, even though they didn't like each other, they come together because my nation, my family is under attack. And that's the way we should be. That's the way we, we should be. And look at them. Now, I don't know how this war is going to turn out, but Russia did not go into Ukraine, you know, like, pow, pow, and that's the end of the war. Those people are putting up a fight. They putting up a real fight. Now, of course, when you put out the media, you know, you're going to try to make yourself better and greater than what you really are. But still, they've been duking it out with Russia, what, two months? It's going on two months now? Really? And that's the way, yeah, that's the way we should be. But we're not family. It's going to be easy to roll over us. Easy. Because we're not family. Negroes ain't about nothing. And that's why we're the number one choice. Number one target for people because they know that no, Negroes can't don't do nothing. Oh, that's Denzel. Who cares? That Negro still owe me $20. I don't care about what he, you know, he owe me $20. We trip off petty things. And we trip off things that don't even don't have nothing to do with us. Well, you know, he, he married to a white woman. I don't care. What, they got, what do they have to do with me? See, I'm looking at the future because if you put yourself and become family, you love your family, as time goes on, the children only going to want to love want to love them. They're only going to want to love themselves. That's in our time because we're all messed up. But in the future, when you show your people love, and that black woman begin to love that black man and that and vice versa, they're not gonna be thinking about nobody else. So you don't have to worry about that. It, it will still happen, very rare, but it's not gonna be like it is right now. Because you fall in love with each other, you work as a family, you work as a team. Like this Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. If we worked on this as a team, just the fact that we're doing it, this is a goal. This is what we want to accomplish. This is what we want to do. You don't have to like me. I don't have to like you, but I, I, want to, I want to do this because I know it's good for us. Just the fact that we're working together to try to accomplish this goal, you will see that we get closer and closer together. You'll be like, damn, to live in this hell ain't bad as I thought they, they would. I was getting ready to push them off that bridge. So it is important. It is important. And we could we talk about this the, the single black mother. When we become family, you will begin to see less and less of that. The single black mother. You begin to see less and less of that as you become family. But right now, we're not family, so it is what it is. And I'm not going to degrade and make mockery of a single mother, because there's a lot of single mothers who have raised by themselves and struggled and done a wonderful job with a lot of these children. You notice they never talk about the, the single fathers. There's fathers out there too. Never talk about the fathers. There's a lot of, so you try to, 
if a, if a woman cannot raise the children properly by herself, I assume the man can't either. What make him so special? He, he, he can raise his children because he got a dingling. Well, you see, my dingling gives me more knowledge than the woman and uh, the mic mitochondria DNA gives us a, <laughs> you know, they always have all these scientific excuses. I'm done. I'm going to pass the mic over to Brother Denzel and then Brother Denzel uh, is going to pass the mic over to, to Brother Talib. Uh, uh, oh, hey, just stand up. You can let uh, Talib uh, go. I like to okay. hear that older people go first. You know, let them talk. <laughs> okay. Respect you. <laughs> oh, age before beauty, right? No, no. It's just <laughs> disrespect your elders, right? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> first of all, let me uh, kind of piggyback off of what Brother uh, Snup Snup said about the Ukrainians. And I know those of you uh, in the pro this community, and within that, uh, you know, frame of thinking, whatever you call yourselves, regardless, is going to probably say this nigga is crazy. But I really don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. Because the Ukrainians, not only is going to come over here in America and take us out probably if we don't get our situation right as people in this country but they are uh, actually even whether they know it or not they're actually saving the world mm. from destruction because if they don't kick Russia's ass Russia might start flying missiles from all, all angles. And Russia already got a mentality going way back to when they were called the Soviets. When it comes to them protecting their uh, land and uh, interests as a nation, they willing to fly missiles from all angles. Uh, you know, they, they got a basis to dispose of to, to uh, make a point. And so, with the way things is turning now, as we know, or those of us that know about this war that's going on between the Ukraine and Russia, where the Ukraine is kicking their ass, so long as they kicking their ass, that, uh, you know, uh, minimize chances of life ending as we know it on this planet Earth. And with that said, I have to give them on that note credit to where it's due. Because we are all, one way or another, connected to this situation. Bar none. We all connected to the situation, whether we want to accept it or not. So those of you out there in the pro-black conscious community, talking that crap about with them, that's the white folks' business. That's their thing. Let them do what they do. No. We get, we are part of this too. All humanity around the place in this earth. Now, uh, moving along to what I want to say regarding this topic this evening. Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, family is very important. But, you know, uh, and, and in the way that the brother summed it up, pretty much, I'm just going to just, you know, add on to it, you know. But the thing about it is, is that I have to say that we as a family, so-called black family, individual families in this country, are definitely so disunited to the point that we, we can't really even call ourselves families. Mm -hmm. And then what also uh, brings in even more division is that you got those among us and so people that say, well, my family is better than yours <laughs> because 
we smile in each other's faces all the time or get along. Well, you know, I used to try to tell a soul brother uh, a few years ago, like, look, you know, maybe your family is getting along. It may seem like they're getting along, but every soul black family in this country is affected some kind of way by the after effects of slavery. And whether you see it up close or you see it at a distance, it's there. So no, none of us come from perfect families. Yeah, some of our families might be well off financially or economically than others to an extent. And some of us may have uh, more, uh, you know, uh, social gathering uh, intact going than certain other families, but all so black families in this country is messed up deeply. As a matter of fact, that family that seems to be more better off than a family that fight and kill each other all the time, let somebody die and leave for $10 million behind and, and watch and see how true color stars sparkling. Hmm. Okay. Even though my family wasn't close, but I didn't know that they were more farther apart until some circumstances came about. Even like when my uh, mother, may she rest in peace, died. Like when a uh, grandmother on my paternal side died years ago when I was a kid, you know? So, uh, you know, uh, as I as time went on and as I began to grow and understand, even from my own personal experience, why we are divided as families is because of uh, materialism. Because of you think you better than I. You know, or because even though your mother or your parent raised you right to the best of their ability and you still didn't, didn't show them how much you appreciated by still running over or, you know, abandoning them, you know, but they were the ones that reared you to make sure that you were in a better position than they were in life, you see. So we, we, we grow to forget those things. We grow not to care, even. You know? Well, that was my mother. That was my father. I'm a different person. So we could use that as an excuse to justify our, uh, you know, indiscriminatory behavior toward each other, you know, or belligerent behavior toward each other. And, and this is what we get as a result when it comes to the broken family. You know, uh, it's been said numerous times well, over the years, I've listened to people talk about how they own children who came from them, who came from the same womb, killing, were, were killing each other over drugs, over drug deals gone bad, and all this type of stuff. You got relatives and gangs from among our community which is really not a community but which is a ghetto fighting against each other whether they know their relatives or not but actually are killing each other 
I'm talking about biological relatives that mm -hmm. can say tripping and killing each other because they from a different hood because they from a different gang say gang say tripping like they call it. Yeah, this is going on among us and it's been going on among us for generations. See, uh, 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 crack cocaine, when that came through in the 80s and 90s, that only saturated that situation made it more uh, prevalently obvious you see but it was going on for generations this is why you got brothers in la still throwing up crooked blood signs at 70 years old this is why you got brothers in chicago in their 60s and 70s or you know, even 80s throwing up uh gd signs or gangster, or uh, uh, wait, with bites, lower signs, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And this is happening all over, not just in them places, but all over the country. All this tribalism going on, and and this has a lot to do with the disunity among even us as being biologically related to each other. You know. I personally know a relative who's in the pro-black conscious community, who part of that so-called conscious community uh, dogma, who will actually let somebody who's not even related to us do harm to me and will stand by and won't say nothing nor do anything about it. And that is also in other cases that it generally goes on among uh, black people in this country. You see your cousin or your, even your sister, your brother getting jumped on by somebody. You will run and go the other way. You won't even stop and call the police or leave. You'll go the other way or walk the other way. Like you don't see nothing. Oh, well, that's that nigga's business. He shouldn't be caught up out there anyway or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the type of mentality that exists among us. Well, I hate that nigga anyway. I wish we weren't even, uh, we, we didn't even have the same mother or father, so F him or her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is the mentality that's going on among us. It's black families, you know, and, and and if you tell somebody that, it'll be hard for them to believe or recognize because it hasn't personally happened to them. Well, just keep living because it's chances, it's chances that it can possibly happen to you because these are the type of people that we're biologically related to, whether it's close or distant relatives, you know, because of the breakup of, of my family, I found out years later that we still got people in Arkansas where one of my grandparents came from. We got people that were state senators, like politicians, like state senators and mayors in states and cities in the South. And I just found this out today, talking to a relative. I don't have all the information probably gathered right now at this time because they didn't have that information gathered all together in the right way. But uh, this is what I'm being told. I'm being told I got someone famous in my family that's into the entertainment acting business. Mm -hmm. All this because families were not united or sociable. We didn't have family reunions like he said back in the 30s and 40s. And had that been done, we wouldn't have this issue right now being disconnected, you see. So, you know, um, 
it's sad. It's, it really is sad. You know, because your great grandfather had a daughter or a son. And then people years later come to find out that they related to your grandparents or your grand aunties that you already knew. And now you got a a person over here that got a whole big family over there. And we don't even know they are relatives, see? Mm -hmm. All because of the breakup of the family. And, and, uh, and, and when a lot of our people left the South coming north, like my grandparents did, to go to Michigan, where, where, the, where they had all the factory jobs at and stuff, you know, uh, we didn't stay. We didn't continue to stay in contact with those relatives in the South. So that's another that's another issue. And I, I strongly believe that that's the reason why it's still a big divide between black people from the North and from the South mm -hmm. or, or by coastal period, you know, because of that type of situation going on, you know? And um, so, I mean, you know, we have, we have, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of tissue. And even when I try to bring it up with certain relatives, it's like they say they, 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 they might interact or, in, 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 or engage in a conversation, but at the same time, you can see it and they hear it in their voice like they really don't want to. Because it, when it comes to the truth, that means you got to, you got to want to reconnect. And that take time, money, even, you know, by, by tracing back your family roots and this and that, you know, and you don't got time for that. So you don't want to really work toward really building no bridges. I hear these uh, black people, especially in the pro-black conscious community, I always talk about what we got to start building the black family back. Oh, really? If y'all was really that interested in building bridges or trying to reconnect bridges with your family, you know you have to work more harder to do it. So that's a bunch of bull doodle. You're not really interested in trying to build gaps or bridge, or, or, or bridge gaps back together as far as black families go, like you say you do. You're just talking. Because if that was the case, we will see a lot of black people unite in this country. Like they always told me in the conscious community when I was under that uh, frame of uh, type of way of thinking, uh, you know, that unity always started at home with the family first. So uh, obviously, if that's the case, then why are these families still broken? And because the family is broken, it's why it's hard for people to get along with people that are not biologically related. It's a connection to that. I know y'all, and I'm not trying to sound spiritual. I'm not trying to sound those uh, 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 divine. The, uh, you know, uh, analytical body. <laughs> I'm just speaking facts. If you come from a broken home, it's going to reflect in your relations with other people. It's just that simple. Now, you may move along and form relationships with other people and have better relationships with other people outside your biological family, but it don't start off that way, is what I'm saying. When you grow to start dealing with people outside of your family home structure, it don't start off that way unless you change, you see. 
and start forming different, uh, you know, families. Because like someone said, just like they said, just because you're from a certain geographical location don't mean that's, that's your home. Wherever you go is your home. <clears throat> and also, I was told wherever you go, there go your family. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, you, you know, all that stuff about, um, well, you got to go back to where your family at. No, my family is wherever I'm at on the planet Earth. And that's the bottom line to that. Especially when I don't got no life back home, wherever I may have came from, or whether where, where, wherever my origins begin in this life. Mm -hmm. See, so that's a myth that that's also kept so many families, uh, you know, discombobulated and divided amongst each other. You know, and 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 and. and and this is the thing I hear people say where well, you should go back and reconnect with your family. Yeah, in ways I've tried to do that. In ways it's worked, in ways it definitely hasn't worked. Even in my personal case, okay. You can't reconnect back with everybody. And that even go for biological family. But then you got those people when you try to uh, relate that same thing to them, they still persist on saying, well, we're still your family. No, that's not true either. It's a difference, like someone used to tell me, it's a difference between family and biological relatives. So that's a big difference. Your family, even if they ain't biologically related to you, your family could be your family for real. Get out there, put themselves out there on Front Street and be willing to die with you. Mm -hmm. Be willing to do whatever it takes to serve each other well being, well as life. And they ain't got to even have one ounce of DNA connecting you both as being related. But there are a lot of biological relatives where on the opposite side, that's not the case. Like I was saying. And me as being a person who's traveled around North America, I've actually been a uh, encountered situations where people actually left me their whole entire basement in their houses didn't know me left me to a whole basement by myself left me to a whole bedroom by myself didn't know me slept over in the same house every day didn't know about some mass murder or rapist didn't know me didn't even know me for a week or a month mm -hmm. just met me took me off the streets it's some there's people in my family who won't do that and i know that's for i know that for a fact it's people i know in my family won't even let me in their house period won't let their own no, no one related to them in their house. And this person is supposed to be a Christian or so called child of God or whatever they call that religion, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. When you talk about family, that's, that's a powerful statement. That you, you got to know what you mean when you say that. You know, you just can't just say that recklessly. And and and, and the thing about it is, is that you know, uh, 
this is the reason why as an individual I've been able to learn more how to be content with the less people I deal with or come in contact with through association because the way things is right now it's not even good to try to make a whole lot of friends let alone talking about reconnecting back with a bunch of family members that got grudges resentment hatred don't like you because of this judge you Mm -hmm. despise you all type of crazy stuff you know and like i heard the brother Talik saying, basically, you know, the reason why we don't have no unity is because it's about what you got from me. What can I benefit tangibly from you? And like I said, I saw this pride toward and after my own mother's death, may she rest in peace. And, it had, and that situation alone opened up my eyes to really see that biological relatives, in fact, are necessary family. Mm. It's just a connection, biological, that's what it means. Biological means DNA connection. Family means those that love you, care about you, treat you equally as they want to be treated, treat mm-hmm. you equally as they treat any other person in that family. And like I said, it ain't got to have nothing to do with you being biologically kin to anyone. You go back even to, to, to civilizations way before ours, that same situation apply. Even the tribes in Africa, even the tribes in Asia or other parts of the world, South America, the biological relatives, but were killing each other, still killing each other. Mm-hmm. Like the Tutsi tribe, the Hulu tribe. It was in the nation of Rwanda over in the continent of Africa. Hundreds of thousands of them died in the tribal war. But there were Hutus, I'm sure, and Tutsis that were biologically related to each other through marriage in some kind of way, I'm pretty sure. Because that's just how things go. You just don't stay a part of the same tribe. That's why when people get them fake ass D, uh, uh, DNA results back, <laughs> talking about, well, I'm Nigerian, I'm Ghanaian, I'm Cameroonian, I'm a uh, Togoian, I'm Burundi, I'm South African. Well, you got to understand that that also comes along with other tribes. Mm-hmm. See, because those other tribes mix with each other too. See, even though they may have been enemy tribes. Think about tribes when they conquer each other. Mm -hmm. The first prize they go for is their women, right? Mm -hmm. There there you go. Now she to mix into that tribe and the conqueror that mixed into her tribe. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, this thing, this thing, like I say, this thing with family, and, and even this applies to us as uh, descendants of slaves here in America, because we came from different people. Yeah. We came from different tribes. And that wasn't even from over there in the continent of Africa, see? But because of this situation, uh, how we ended up becoming biologically related to each other or so-called tribally related to each other was through slavery. 
us. Exactly. You see, so our case is unique because we still uh you know connected to slavery. One thousand percent. Doctor, yes, that went to the library. Let me show you how, how this how this nation looks at us. I went to the library. This library I, I used to go for on a regular basis. I went to check back in some stuff that I have read in out the library. And I, for some reason, I wasn't planning to go to the top floor of that library, but I did to just go and look into the section where they had black history books at all the time. And they used to lay African American section. I didn't see African American up there. You know what I saw? I saw civil rights and slavery. Hmm. If it was anything related to us, that's what it said. And then when I went down and looked at the other on, on the on the side of the other aisles where they had different books at related to people's history and culture, I see European history. I even seen African geography, African geography, which has nothing to do with us as so-called Negroes here in America, or uh, African uh, countries, you know, Central America, Mexican history. They even had history as far as uh, Asians, say Asian history. I just see nothing related to African American, and they used to have. And if you used to go to the library, you see on the on the end of the books where they would have the 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 the, uh, the black and green and red emblem that we got from that flag that Marcus Scott presented to us over a hundred years ago, and you would see. They had on that, on under that, over that, it used to say African American. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't have that when I went back up in there. And this one of the most recent times I've been going to that library since I even started going there in a long, in a long time. See, so uh, this this shows you how much we really mean to this nation in society as a whole, as a people, when it comes to anything dealing with us, domesticatedly, all we looked at in terms of civil rights or being slaves. They don't even call us African American. They get to the point now, well, you know, we're so confused, so they don't know what to call us because we're too confused on who we are anyway. But, <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's just as we get. When you come to us, that's what we're, we're associated with. And this, this, and, and see, if we had more unity as families, we wouldn't have this problem. We wouldn't even be having this discussion. You know, and uh, another thing, too, is that I want to mention is that, uh, you know, yeah, we were broken up as families in slavery. Yes, we were. And that's one another reason why we don't even know who he is. That's why we're walking down the streets, on the street corner, the sidewalk, looking at each other crazy, driving by, looking at each other crazy or whatever, talking to each other crazy, and don't even know we could be biologically related, not necessarily family. Once again, but we could be biologically related and don't even know that. Exactly. <clears throat> and, it, and, and who knows how many times this has happened across America? Somebody got shot, a lost their life because somebody uh, glanced at them. Well, that could have been your long distant relative from slavery that you just killed and possibly caught a case over in this in prison during the life sentence over. You see, you you know, we don't care. We don't, we, we, we've gotten to the point that we've gotten so far away to the point where we don't even care truthfully about any type of connection. Let it be 
Would it be family connection? Would it even be just relative connection by itself? We don't care because all we see is another nigga word. Mm. Just the way the pecker would do us, that's what we see. This is what this is what this has become. You know, and to tell you the truth, if they put weapons, the kind of military weapons in our hand that they put in them Africans' hands over there on the continent, like those people in the Congo and Rwanda, they play in other different parts of uh, the continent where they be warring at with each other, like Liberia and stuff. Like down already as a population in this country. We'll probably wipe each other out quicker than they wipe each other out over there. Because that's how deep deep our hatred is with each other. We don't never take that into account and think about that. So uh I mean, you know, um this is the situation that we are in. This is how deeply the hate is. You know, this is how deep the hate is among us. We really don't have time to even judge other people. We don't even have time to judge and talk about Caucasians. Because our hatred is so deep, deep to for each other. Whereas, <laughs> hey, we better not even open our mouth and say, even if we open our mouth and say something, considered respectable we might get cussed out or get a bullet put in us i might say it's me but bumping into somebody and still get my head blew off this is the type of mentality we have amongst each other so when you talk about family <laughs> That's a crisis in itself that we haven't really addressed. Matter of fact, you know, uh, I want to say this. Until we could address how we treat each other as a family, even if we are biologically uh, connected to each other, to kin, blood, country, shit, um, you know, if we're going to ever become liberated, that's going to be the first thing we're going to have to address. It'll be more but easier if we could collectively come together can be able to do that on a more easy basis but uh, in, in order for us to even be able to stay in control we're going to have to address that family issue thing mm -hmm. that's going to be one of the very first things we're going to have to address I'll put it that way we, we, we need to you know by the fact we can't wait to address that we have to take control of the state to put us in a position to be able to address that more efficiently. But that's going to, once we do take control of the state, that's something we're going to have to address. One of the very first things off the bat we're going to have to address. Because family disconnection, whether it's on a biological relational basis or just on the general basis when it comes to community uh, basis or looking at the situation we're going to have to really address that mm -hmm. we're going to have to we can't go no further until we address that because if we don't address that then anything else when it comes to talk about us being beneficially in a better position as a people, it's just going to go out the window. This 
this is why our children, our grandchildren, our grand, our nieces, our grand nephews, our grand, uh, you, you know, nieces and nephews don't respect us. It's the one in my family, not well, that I am biologically connected to. One of the last times I talked to her, I FaceTimed her recently, just to have a conversation with her. You know, I'm not going to go all into it. It's not necessary, but she straight up called me Unc. At first, she was calling me Uncle. Then she called me Unc. I'm her elder. Then she called me that. See? Mm -hmm. You know where that come from? That come from the dysfunctional home. That come from her and her mother, her biological mother, not being able to functionally get along with each other. So she disrespects any elder in the family she comes across or, or, or you know, or just talk to, you see? So this is, this is what's happening. And this is another thing too, I want to say, Oh, and, and being that I brought that up, I, I want to also say, anytime you smoke drugs with your own child, all respect go out the window. I don't care if it's weed, crack cocaine, heroin, even if you drink with your child. That's a drug. Alcohol is weed. It's whether we rather know whether we know it or not, but you know. When you, anytime you, anytime you engage with stuff like that with your own offspring, especially when they're at that younger age, all respect go out the window. They would never respect you. See, so, you know, this is another thing that is divided the family up so much, you know? let alone witnessing your parents. It's one thing to witness your parents doing dope, but when you actually are engaging with them, getting high, all respect go out the window. See, if you see them, you can still form some type of kind of relationship with them that, that, that will go beyond being a toxic relationship, but that can that can never happen when you are known to actually do drugs with your parent or the parent doing drugs with that child. It's gonna it's gonna have to take a lot of impossibilities for that relationship to become more than toxic. You know, you that's just something you don't do. And, and I noticed this younger generation is doing that. And, and you wonder you wonder why the younger generation don't respect us. And then they look not only at the parent, but they start looking at the grandparent. They start looking at the great grandparent. See, y'all y'all think y'all think that it just stopped at the parent. No. When they see the parent is out of order then they treat the grandparent with the same situation. <laughs> you, 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 you know, because the first thing they gonna think with in was, was her parent doing the same thing with her or what rules they doing with her to make her want to engage with me like this. And I'm a child. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you know, <laughs> it's a generational thing passed down from one to another. You see? So this is not no game. We are in a, we are in a very situ serious situation whether we know it or not. We are very divided. We have family members 
living cross country from each other thousands of miles away. Won't even call each other to check on to see who did died. The probably don't even know some relatives that died. You know what I'm saying? You know? As a matter of fact, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I didn't know my step-grandfather had passed away for years because of my uh, disconnect before I started back communicating with certain family. And then these certain family members, I decided to, to, to let it remain to being disconnected because see you can't like i said before you can't reconnect with everybody if they're not going to treat you equally regardless if they're biolog biologically related to you or not if they're not going to treat you with respect do you want to be treated or if you would treat them or if they're not going to treat you so-called spirit as they say but with the spirit of love then what, what, what is the what is the use of you communicating it is no need for communication you know if you if you're gonna act funny style why are you trying to why the other person trying to you know engage you with love kindness but you you gonna act evil and vicious, then what's the use of the communication? See, so uh, that's why I say we all cannot reconnect with certain family. There might be issues where you might be mad because your brother killed your mother and your father. Or your parent killed one of your siblings. You see what I'm saying? Over, 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 uh, over, over a drink of beer, a drink of whiskey, or getting high together. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. See, we don't we don't go internally into that type of stuff because we just want to touch on the surface. See, all that surface stuff ain't getting us nowhere. Yeah, we know we got to start uniting as some people. We got to start coming back together as one would say as families and this and that. You know, but that surface stuff. Let's go into the detail. Get get, get into the deep, nitty great detail about it. See? Until we could do that, I don't see no such thing as black families reconnecting on a positive level. And I know many of you are going to say, oh, you sound negative, Talia. Yeah, well, the truth is the truth. Okay. The truth ain't always pretty. Remember that, right? Like they always say, right? So, I mean, you know, that's just what it is, family, and, and or, or, or those of you that want to be family. But uh, that's just what it is. And uh, I'm not going to hold the mic up. I want to uh, let other people have a chance to talk. And even if my brother Denzel want to talk, uh, or if Tali want to say some more. I will uh, press my mic and thanks for uh, hearing me speak these important <laughs> words to y'all on this uh, topic. And peace. All righty then. That was good. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much, Atalil. Well, it's, 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 uh, the mic is on you, Brother Denzel, if you want to. Give a oh, few okay. words. Oh, okay, okay I, I'll make it yeah, short. I'll make it short. Oh, uh, you can just take your time, brother. Take your time. <laughs> oh, uh, I respect what Talib was saying and Andrew Snupnuff said. And you know, you, uh, 
You know, it's kind of crazy, though. Uh, I've been thinking about that topic for like this whole like last week. And it's crazy. I know I keep bringing up Chief X because he yeah. was having a uh, he was saying something about how, you know, black families need to take care of each of 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 each other individually. And I never agree with that. You see, like mm -hmm. piggybacking off of what y'all said, like I come from a, a single uh, mother household, so I know, I know that that uh, whole experience firsthand. Yes, and my mother, and even my aunt, you know, they um, like over the past years, they even took care of other people's children. Let them mm. stay in their house for years and everything. So I know like how like how far family goes, and I never agreed with that. Even Pharaoh mm. was even talking. Pharaoh said that was even talking about that. It's kind of crazy, you know. He say a lot of pseudo things, but it's kind of <laughs> interesting, like how you Andrew snubbing up and him have similar ideas, and y'all just mm -hmm. uh, it's just kind of crazy. And you know, I do think. You know, like, I think black people have become so entitled and so embroiled into that. You know, like, I know, like, you know, a lot of conservatives, black people, they say, you know, you should help yourself. You know, you shouldn't say, brother, you know, you're not my brother. You know, <laughs> right. You know, and I know I know certain liberals and I know personally, like my landlord, you know, she a Muslim, but I can't spend mm -hmm. the night over her house. And I know like Hispanics, they um there was a Hispanic um mother. Well, my bad. I have an Hispanic friend, and his mother always treated me as a I was one of them. She let me spend the night over her house, you know, she took care of me, fed me. You know, she did what she could, you know. Whenever my aunt or my mother wanted her to like when I was younger, they needed like the, her to watch me because they was going somewhere, I would go to her house. So I understand the idea, like how family, like how far it goes. And I do think that a lot of black people don't understand that because, like I said, it's 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 um even with myself, you know, I try to like like it's something that you said to leave want for others, what you want for mm -hmm. yourself. Yes, and I, I love that yeah. statement. I keep thinking about it like every every day you know i really want to help my other friend you know get out of prison i just don't have you know the money i just but i decided uh, i found out some information about him and i'm gonna have to probably mail to him and see how he doing mm -hmm. if he can if i can or if he can get, get back to me but i always like my friends like even my family i always try to like Stay in touch with them and, you know, you know, give them things, you know, because I understand that whole idea of, you know, family. And I understand that if some people want to be like to themselves, I get that, too. You know, mm -hmm. it's. uh, It, it could be hard sometimes for some people, but sometimes you just have to let people be amongst themselves. You know, every night, like to live, said not everybody mm -hmm. is going to want to be family some people just just like to be amongst themselves and yeah. you know yeah. it's uh i think that's the part that comes with unity is like realizing like if everybody was uh treat each other like family then we probably have better structure but some people say you know it starts in your household too mm -hmm. you know and I I don't know because certain certain people just it's just it's hard for like certain families like to get along you know sometimes it's, it just it just can't happen and that's why some people end up like you know sons daughters they end up going to somebody else's family and they mothers end up raising them so I like yeah. I think it's uh me personally I I think it's like I do that there should that should be more addressed more, you know, but I think it's too much tribalistic, you know, 
it's too much tribalism and it it just it's just stopping everything, you know. And I don't know, Talib. I I mean, Talib. I I may disagree with you on something when it comes to like. Well, I don't. It's not that I disagree. I just I thought about it. You know, like how you say if somebody date outside their race, right? Well, I'm right. not dating nobody at the moment, but uh, you know, like if somebody, you know. Like let's say they date some Hispanic or an Asian or somebody like that, you know. If family goes that far, maybe that person that they fall in love with, maybe they may they may share. Now you can also find this in your own culture, your own ethnic background. They may share similarities with that person, you know. Like you know, like let's say for instance somebody car breakdown, you know, if you really love that person, but, you know, or, just, you know, how certain love stories may start like that, you know, somebody right. car break down, and you may, like, pitch in to, you know, help get the car fixed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, I think, like, I think, like, that sometimes how, you know, I think family go you know, sometimes it goes farther than, you know, even that. I think that's one reason why some people date outside their race sometimes. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm be, sometimes when I get into those conversations, I'll be on the fence about it, you know, because mm -hmm. I think for cultural reasons, I think black people should, you know, date amongst they, they, uh, their own to preserve culture, you know, and to keep passing that on. For generations and generations. However, I'm not also I'm not against people dating outside their own race either. If they feel, you know, that's what they want. You know, mm -hmm. I'm for both. But I also I understand that there should be more of a structure to the you know the black man and the black woman. You know? It's it it can be hard. I mean, I think that's why a lot of uh me personally, I think that's why a lot of people, you know, some people turn to criminal activity sometimes because they may have, like you said, like Talia said, they grew up in a household where that was like always around them, you know, and they may fail. They may have felt like they were nothing. Now, I, I don't think that's yeah. a reason to go out and, and shoot somebody. But, you know, I think to live, I think, I mean, to <laughs> I think some people's uh, I, I, I keep y'all name y'all name so similar so I get them confused sometimes. Well, but I let think me be angry. No, you don't have to get it. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I think some people turn to you know criminals because mm -hmm. you know it be a certain uh altercation. You know, I I was uh on a train. Some days I don't drive. So I, I take the train sometimes and I was on the train. I was talking to this brother. Uh, he was an older guy and he was telling me something. But well, he was loud, you know, you know, a lot of loud people on the train. <laughs> but he was uh, telling me something, you know, like when he was like in the street life, you know, he, they used to be a park that they used to go to. And, you know, it got so bad to the point that people who know each other, because you know how, you know, black people are certain areas is poor so you know they may know you but you know they may be they may treat you like family but you know they may see something that you got like if you got a hundred dollars they may stick you up for it. you know they may tell you like you know you, know, you my guy but you know i'm struggling man and you got a hundred and i need it so i'll just stick you up mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. i think i think that's just how like things start you know it's just certain I guess it is like uh, Talib was saying, and you. I mean, certain material things can, you know, change, or a certain argument can change somebody's life. It can make them like a villain, or make them distant from people. And it's, you know, sometimes it's just a tough pill to swallow. But you know, sometimes you just gotta admit the truth. Some yes, some man. black people, some black people will never get along with each other. I mean. Nope. And about, I mean, that's just the uh, 
the tribalistic uh thing that you know that really concerns me. But there is something else, uh, Andrew snuggling up into Lib that really that I'm really kind of afraid of. I know you said about the uh you know climate change. I know that's a big issue. Yeah. I know that that really is. I've been I've been following that ever since I like for years, and I know like like it's becoming a problem because you not now you have species animal species coming over to the U.S. You know, I guess because they migrate. Now some of these are very dangerous, and you know, even the uh, I just read a paper about uh well it was an article about uh you know uh plastics in your DNA now yeah. Yeah, that's the you know, <laughs> I kind of thought about like, okay, that's kind of scary, but you know, but despite that, what I'm really afraid of, I think that this tribalist tribalism thing in the black community is going to really get to the point that people, somebody's going to get hurt, somebody's going to be killed because it's only a matter of time before. One of these people from ADOS or, you know, you got the conservatives, liberals, you got, you know, like all these aboriginal, all these groups, they get into it with one of these gang members and Mm -hmm. something is going to happen. And some of them may be gang members themselves and something is going to end up happening to where, you know, like, I just think that that stuff is just going to start turning into death and people just going to start going quiet. The leaders going to start going quiet. You know, once once you get into it with one of them, it's like, especially the ones, the shooters, it's like, it's, it's an internal thing. Because then it's going to start spreading because then you're going to have other gang members that's going to start saying, yeah, we don't like them. And you know, now... I know, I know what what they be saying out there now. Well, I'm young. I know they be saying they say you an op. <laughs> it's uh-huh. like I don't know if you heard of that age, <laughs> but uh, they they say you an op. I think that's like street terms for opposition. So mm. I mean, I think uh, a lot of you know a lot of these conscious groups gonna be start being ops to you know gangs and when somebody gets shot. That's that's it. <laughs> ain't no ain't no turning back. And I don't want that to happen. I do want unity, but I think it's just people people are just too tribalistic, man, and it's I I guess people don't realize they can't get outside of their way and they don't realize the bigger picture. They just live in yeah. that little small little bubble. And it's so hard for them, like, to realize, like, hey, you know what? You know, we ain't got to like each other, but we got to, gotta, like I said, we got to go in one direction, not one ideology. But, you, right. you know, it's, it's just never, I want it to, I wish it was the other way. You know, I wish, you know, I want the Mississippi campaign to go far, you know, and I want it to, you know, achieve and, and be a foundation for which, you know, Black people and all people, you know, yes, can benefit from. But you know, from how the way I'm looking now, you know, I, I don't even think black people are like, you know, and and, and Andrew Snub Nub, I've actually seen it. Like, man, look, uh, where I work at, man, I've seen the unification of Hispanics. I, like, I seen it firsthand. Like, man. You wouldn't even believe like how like how they got their neighborhoods. Man, these mm. mods, they got company trucks <laughs> with their logos on it and stuff. And I'm sitting, I see their trucks every day on the highway. I'll be like, man, yeah, why ain't we doing that? <laughs> like, I mean, why like why you know I, I'm not one of the person to say, you know, it, you know, you gotta do it yourself, but you know, it it, it takes a team to do all that. And we not we not thinking about that, you know. And I know Hispanics personally, they all have their own ideologies, and you know, they don't agree with each other, but they can yeah. work together. They can work together, and we can't. In every area, we just divided it. Even in the family household, you know, man, 
I, I don't know. I have talked to certain Hispanics too. They have told me some stories about mm -hmm. uh some gang members, you know, that were relatives and they end up shooting each other. So I mean, mm -hmm. maybe there is maybe there is, you know, certain similarities between us and them. But not always. I I see it. So and uh it's just something else, uh to leave. Talik, Talik, uh, Talik. I oh, know, Adrian Snow, no seven. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 it's something else I learned about, you know. You know, and uh, it's it's my last thing, and then I'm uh just pass the mic over to you. You know, uh, it's something that you know. If people, I know people ain't interested. But, you know, like I said, I was trying to be a paleontologist. And mm -hmm. have you ever, like, like, you know, most people, they have interest in dinosaurs, right? But a lot of people don't know where dinosaurs come from. Like, where did they evolve from? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there were some papers that came out recently of these, uh, these dinosaur-like animals. They're called, like, dinosaur morphs but the point of which i'm trying to get is that they play a key factor into the success of dinosaurs like how they will begin to diversify it was because of these small animals it took like it took 15 million years from dinosaurs to diverge and evolve from dinosaur morphs now from what the scientists tell me during the time of dinosaur morphs, their environments was harsh. Like mm -hmm. it was the most, it was the most terriblest time. Drought, all kind of stuff. But they, I don't know if dinosaur morphs were like social animals, but I, there may have been like some that were. The one that gave rise that was ancestral to the dinosaurs, they probably were. They probably were omnivorous too. Mm -hmm. But the whole goal I'm trying to uh, I want people to take from this is that dinosaur morphs like they passed their genetics on to the uh, next generation. Of course, they went extinct so dinosaurs could live on. But it took a long time. It took a lot of uh, work, a lot of evolution, a lot of trial and error. You know, and I'm pretty sure that the, I mean, you know, dinosaurs ain't like us. You know, they they, they ain't gonna unify. But I'm pretty sure <laughs> that <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure that the earliest, the ancestral dinosaurs or the original ones, they were probably social. They probably mm -hmm. existed in the same in groups. You know, because it meant they survival depended on that. Yeah, and. A lot of people don't know this, but dinosaurs were living in, they were living with their predecessors for like the dinosaur morphs for a few, a few million years. But I mean, there was, there was going to be a takeover, but in that short amount of time, I'm just saying that, you know, uh, it just took so much time and effort. And I think, you know, black people got to like, you know, they should taking the deserve from that and if you knew like man how successful dinosaurs were like mm -hmm. like for 180 million years so imagine how much like the world threw at them you know it was tsunamis tornadoes <laughs> diseases everything but the dinosaurs never went away of course you know a media ended all that shit but you know uh i'm just saying it all that came from these little small reptile like animals with which they evolved from and it took trial and error it took a lot of things and you know I just think you know people should learn from that you know but that's all I got to say other than that you know? yes, I'll pass yes, the mic over to you Andrew Snub Nub all right well we're doing pretty well here I guess I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up and give our give our closing statements, <clears throat> and uh, you know the, the the chat room really enjoys you, Denzel. I uh, thank you very much, brother, for for coming by, and also brother Talib. 
Uh, I just want to make a few comments here very, very quickly um, based upon what you and Brother Talil was saying. <clears throat> um, he was talking about the gang, and I simply want to say that for many people, especially those who come from dysfunctional families or uh, caught up in the foster care system and things of this nature, you don't have you really don't have family. You're just out here struggling, trying to make it on your own. And then you come out here and these people, when you meet uh, these people, criminals, criminals are nice. When they, when you first meet a lot of these different criminals and people in the drug game, they're nice to you. Hey, little brother, come here, man. Let me, you know, they'll break you off a little something, blah, blah, blah. And give you, you know, give you some runs and you get to feel that little money in your pocket or whatever, get you all caught up. But they give you the reason why a gang is successful is because a gang is like a family. It's a real strict family. They don't play games. A lot of people that join gangs, you initiate it. You get your ass with really, really bad. You know, you're going to have to prove or they're going to give you an assignment. You got to do something to show that you are loyal to the family. So uh, people are willing to do that. What I got to lose? I'm eating now. Look how I'm dressing now. You know, it's like family to them. And it's, it's, it's some people get caught up. But why can't we be like the gang except we're not trying to exploit you? We're not trying to get you into criminal life where you can end up in federal prison or you can end up in the morgue. Or you do something that you regret. So we're not like that. But that's the that's again shows the importance of family. Gangs give many people that sense of belonging. You know, it's a sense of belonging. So here we are in America, and you have people that talk about Africa, or they tell you that you're Aboriginal. My problem here is whether you feel as though we are connected to Africa or Aboriginal, my problem is you can't get along with your biological people from Tennessee, from Georgia, from Louisiana, from Texas. You don't get along with your own biological people that you know, that you was born or some of you were born and raised with. So how are you going to tell me, oh, we got to go to Africa and love the Africans or be Aboriginal? You don't even love the people that you know, born in the United States, way before you was even thought about some Africa, way before you thought about some Native American, Aboriginal, whatever. How you because see, this is they live in a delusional world because those are people. The same reason why you don't like your mama, the same reason why you don't like your cousin, the same reason why those people can exhibit the same behaviors. Native Americans can steal, Native Americans lie, Africans lie, they steal, they rape, they rob, they cheat. Matter of fact, one of the most famous scams that we heard on lately. Is that Nigerian scam? You know, they call and how you doing that business? I got a hundred thousand dollars for you. Send me one hundred, and you know, and that's your brother. You know, then you find out that you got Nigerian DNA. You know, <laughs> Nigerian just ripped you for for five hundred bucks. You you never see that hundred thousand dollars. But they act like these people don't do do. They don't take a piss. They are human beings. There's nothing different between them. You're going to have the same kind of problems. What make you think because you go to Africa, all of a sudden you're in paradise. Those people aren't holy and righteous and you don't, if you go over there, you, you might mess around and get your head chopped up. They don't play over there. It's according to where you go. They'll set you up for the kill. I had a video where these sisters bought this land or had some land over in Africa and they killed them because those people said, you don't, you, this is not your, this is not your land. Hours. Where you come from? I saw a video where it was some American, African Americans, in some kind of shopping, uh, shopping place, and they was calling them. I forgot what the name, Akata or something like that. I forgot what the name is. And those people kept telling them, "I'm African." They said, "No, you Akata, meaning you, you a white, you white man." They was calling you white man. We will take your money, you white man. 
But my thing is, how can you love people, foreign people that you never met in your life, and you can't you can't get along with Angel Snub Number Seven? You on Angel, you here talking all this African American Africa stuff, and you can't even get along with me. And I live right here in America, which you speak the language, go to Kentucky Fried Chicken like you do, same stuff, and you can't get along with me. But you can go all the way, six thousand miles, whatever the hell it is. And all of a sudden, it's lovey-dovey. That's not how life works. It's not how life works. Just like when you're dealing with women. You're going to deal with women. Some of them are going to be terrible. Some of them are going to be bad. I've had beautiful women in my life. And I messed up. I can admit, I'm the one messed up. I, I, I messed around and let some good ones go. And then I messed around, of course, as you know, I got some terrible ones. <laughs> you know, it's been... It's been a terrible ride ever since. <laughs> but it's all great. I also want to talk about family, the husband and, and wife roles. I think that the husband and wife roles that the way that we have it set up or we're used to or accustomed to, I think that's a cool setup. Except the husband has to understand you don't run your your role ain't no better than the wife's just because you go out and to do and get a job and whatever that's your purpose the purpose of the wife staying home with the children so she can nurture children and, and watch and protect those children you go out and do the labor it's like when in, in in the animal kingdom some of the males go out and find food and bring it back to the nest the, the mother bird stays on the nest and the father goes out or sometimes they take turns. He'll, he'll sit on the nest and she'll go out. But it's got to be an understanding here of the roles and it has to be an understanding that one is not better than the other. Now, in, in our situation, these brothers, these men, they tell me about the role of men, but they can't live up to it. It's too, it's too high. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of responsibility to be the breadwinner, the provider, and the protector. That's a lot of, that's a lot of, of responsibility. And that's why a lot of them can't handle it. They fall apart. They can't handle it. That's a lot of responsibility to be the breadwinner. And the way that we're we're so spoiled and conditioned, that what makes it even, even more terrible because we're we're not, we're so comfortable, we're not used to hard times, you know. Living my look, my my grand uh my grand uncle, his wife never never worked. He sent all his children if they wanted to go. I don't think everybody went, but he worked. He this man always had two or three jobs. His wife never worked, and all his children, the ones that wanted to go, they went to college. Never was on welfare. Never. Every time I saw him, work, work, work. And I'm like, why you work so hard like that? He said, do you know I got nine children? <laughs> he said, that's why. That's why. My grand uncle built his house. He put in electric. He put in, he, 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 he did the mortar. He did the bricks. He did the plumbing. My uncle built his house. He didn't go out and buy a house like that. He built his house from the ground up. He had those kind of skills. We don't have no skills. We don't have no kind of skills at all. The only thing we got is our little dangling. Hey, well, that should be good enough. <laughs> Swinging dangling around, you know. And a woman, children, family needs more. We need family. Family needs more than that, you know. And then we're not in a we're not in a rush to go out and get a shotgun against against an enemy, because them Ku Klux Klan members, them brothers should have got together or whatever. Hey, y'all. <laughs> we ain't going for this. You want some ass? You got to bring some ass to get some. This is 2020, 22. You want some ass? You got to bring ass to get some. Now, you do know, but we do know that in the past, you know that it was against the law for black people to own guns. It was against the law. So they couldn't fight back like that. But this is 2022. So, I mean, if you can't provide it, at least protect, brother. Pick up. I mean, you do it in the gangs and everything else. Whatever you shoot each other, can't we 
pop the enemy sometime? You know, I'm just I'm just saying, I'm just asking the question here. But that's the role. We have to understand the family, we have to understand our roles. Just like in B society or any of these other societies, they understand their role, do what you gotta do, and everything will be cool. And you know, everything will, uh, 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 will take care of itself. And the last point I want to make, and I'm gonna pass it to, to, to Liv, is we was talking about interracial relationships. Now there are some interracial relationships. That person who you married to or whatever that's outside your race, they're going to draw you into their world. And it's all about them, basically, like Serena Williams. Serena Williams is what a white man. She's lost. She's really lost in the white man's world. He's not going, he's not telling her, you need to get with your people, learn about Africa or something. He's not doing that with Serena. You, you mind. You mind, you belong to me. But you do, but you have Caucasian people. Matter of fact, some, some Caucasian people was actually raised with black folks. And black people, all they know. But I'm not talking about that kind. I'm talking about you do have Caucasian people. When they love you and they're down with you, they'll throw down with you. There was a movie called uh, Dances with Wolves. Had that soldier out in the middle of the, of the wilderness. And he messed around and got to learn and know the Indian people out there, the Native American. And he fell in love with them. And he turned on the United States government. He stood with the, with the Native Americans when he was supposed to be against them. Because he learned and got to like them and learn their ways and understood, understood their humanity. And found out they wasn't what he was conditioned to believe and know. So, but that's very rare too. But you do have people like that. They will throw down with you. If you my friend, they'll throw down with you. One for all, all for one. They'll throw down with you. It's rare. Now, there's people say, he loved a white man. Right? And that's the first thing, these stupid Negro. Well, hell, I'm with you. What the hell did you do? Well, you flag my channels. You slander me and gossip. That's what you do. That's what you have done. You stole my money and the list goes on and on. And you're gonna tell me about some white folks, what white people do. What about you? What about you? But I'm gonna be friends with you. What the, what the hell do you do? So I'm like Dr. King. I judge people by the content of their character, who they are. That's the way I'm going because clearly just because a Negro, somebody got black skin like you, that don't mean a damn thing. We know that. Passing the mic over to uh, Brother Talib. And with that said, Brother, I concur. I would like to start off by closing out with saying that I concur and, and, and that, uh, you know, uh, I just want to say that, uh, you, you, you know, uh, I was, uh, looking at this video recently and uh speaking that y'all have brought up uh you know interracial relationships i was going to say that today you know i saw a video that was talking about how brothers are afraid to approach soul sisters mm -hmm. i'm talking about the uh, considered beautiful looking kind or whatever you know mm -hmm. And how they afraid in the streets to approach them like they don't approach them like we used to do when we came up from our generation, you know. And uh, because you know the mentality that the soul sister is developed, well, I'm independent. I can do without you. I don't need you, and this and that, right? Mm -hmm. And so now you got sisters complaining about, you know. Uh, why they don't approach us well that's what y'all wanted right not to be approached so there you go and so what i'm saying too is that uh you know when, when brothers decide that hey look i've had enough of this crap 
I'm going to go get me a Caucasian. I'm going to go get me an Asian. Or I'm going to go to South America and get me a Brazilian. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I'm going to go over to the Philippines and get one of them Filipinos. Or I'm going to go to Jamaica and get me one of them. Or I'm going to go over to Nigeria or Ghana and get me one of them sisters over there. You know, you can't get mad when you push this old man away. When you tell him, well, he ain't nothing, he ain't got, you know, what have you done for me? You ain't got nothing I want. You know, you you, you don't even got a pair of uh, 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 decent socks on your feet. Nigga, get out my face. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like you to push them away. So what choice do you leave him with? And for those of brothers who, who ain't uh who don't choose to be dickly well they're gonna go to another uh race for female companionship that's just how it go so uh you know you can't blame a brother for that when you push him in that direction when you say well if you approach me all i gotta do is call a white man on you Oh, you on what you on paper? You on parole? Oh, okay. <laughs> you do something they don't like? Oh, I call your PO and make up a lie. And mm -hmm. you sit right back to the penitentiary over a flat out lie. And, and they gonna believe her. Well, you a criminal anyway. Man, send them back. You know, they don't investigate. They don't really ask questions when it comes to the woman's story. Oh, you on paper, you still a uh, uh, property of the state anyway. Get your ass back in there. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, this is this is what's happening. And so, uh, I mean, you put your own fellow soul male kind in the position to do that. And and, 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 and and I want to say this too, you know, uh, and I know there are some of you, those of you who are going to disagree, but when you tell black soul people, first of all, that oh, the Mississippi campaign ain't going to work, uh, or you try to convince them, or at least to listen or to try it out or anything that's going to lead us to true liberation for once upon the oppressor and then uh, that, that black person say nah, I'm going to go to Africa no, I'm going to go somewhere over to Asia I'm going to go to the Caribbean or whatever mm -hmm. get away from y'all niggas over here right and you say, well, why you going to go to another country? Your well, ancestors built this country. Okay, we understand all that. Well, our ancestors didn't benefit from being in this country. So they left. Like the people that went to Liberia, they left them no reason to stay here. Well, today, you leaving a lot of brother, brothers and sisters feeling like there's no reason to stay in America. So yeah, you gonna tell them, uh, like you tell them they shouldn't go outside their race. You gonna tell them not to go to another country, but you don't give them no reason to why they should stay in America, other than to keep putting up with the with the with the fire they putting up with it. You see, that don't make no sense. And, and I'm not saying I'm not saying this because I'm defending people that 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 that, that want to leave the country and go other places when we should be over here together working together to carve out a better existence for ourselves here in America. But you leave black people with no choice. And that's again going back to what I was saying, the same thing applies. That uh when you tell a black man that you don't need him, that you don't want him. Well, that same concept applies. So he's like, I'm going to go get me a, a, 
I'm gonna go over here and get me a snow bunny, a pink snow bunny. And don't give a damn what you or anybody else say or think about it. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> this is what we at. And, 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 and because we don't have love or care or understanding or, or, or consideration to open our minds to that fact, is why our people going to do whatever they got to do to survive. Mm-hmm. Because that's the only mode we living in. We're not really living. We only live in the survival mode. You see exactly. <clears throat> you know, uh, that's that's what you that's what you give them all the choice but to do that. So stop telling black people what they should do. In other words, stop telling people, stop telling another slave what they should do and what they should do, and 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 and, and, and apply your own. Uh, Message like Teddy, like like what's his name? Uh, used to say, uh, very right. Practice what you preach. <laughs> you know. <laughs> mm. So so yeah, that's 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 where that's at. You know, people, you you know, people ain't got time for that. You know, you running around. You you know, trying to convince and tell other black people what to do. You just another damn slave, Negro. And that's just the bottom line to that. And that's what the, that's what the society look at you as. And until you do something else that's different to change that narrative for real, that's all you're gonna be is a damn slave, including myself, including uh, brother Snuff Snuff, including brother Denzel, <laughs> including uh, you know the deacons of uh, reality. We we all still gonna be slaves until we do something else. That's right. Uh, entirely different about this situation <laughs> and to the end we don't need to be telling another slave what to do and that's part of our problem we always tell another slave what to do you know you are talking about well, why don't you need to talk no that's commonly come collectively together mm-hmm. all they're talking about leading the charge ain't got us nowhere Exactly. That's why we got a bunch of the leaders that was assassinated. Mm-hmm. And, and, and to this day, they they found these have been forgotten about and all kind of stuff. Let alone the living huh. that, that, that stayed alive, that's languishing in prisons because they was trying to fight for us to be liberated from an oppressor. We forgot about them, so don't sit up and tell another slave what to do. With that said, yes, sir. I'm gonna uh, pass the mic back to our brother, uh, Angel Snuff Snuff Seven, and thanks for letting me speak. In peace, and to everyone who's listening and who will be listening when this video is posted. Yes, sir. And last but not least, brother, brother Denzel, did you have any last? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I just got one more thing. Uh I keep it short. Hey, um I think uh one more thing uh, about family that I think black people don't understand, you know, the idea of it. You know, a lot of these pro black people, you know, when they say you know they related to the ancient Egyptians. Mm-hmm. But I just found I see and now I just found this out. You know, a lot of the uh, the dynasties, most of them practice incest. And I thought about it. They didn't have an understanding of family. See, they they were so busy into keeping things into themselves that King Tut, like he had health problems. Yeah. And a lot of people don't even know that. And. I'm just saying, if you want to learn, I like. I mean, they don't even understand. A lot of the pro-black people don't even understand that. You know, they didn't have an under the idea of expanding their family outside. Mm-hmm. It was it would be beneficial, but they didn't understand that. And you know, I see that's that's the reason why I can understand the importance of family expanding. Because if you're not going to, you know, develop a a a community where everybody is treated the same, 
Therefore, you're able to work together. You're going to fall. You know, That's you're right. never you're not going to survive. So and apparently King Tut was the last of his 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 lineage. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, I found out that sick stuff, you know, I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I couldn't believe that. But the dude had, I mean, he just had health problems. And, you know, that's just, that's all I got to say. That's, that's it. You know, <laughs> it's just one thing. <laughs> yeah, I've been bringing that up too to them. They don't, they get quiet, they don't talk about that. So I, we part of royalty. I said, what? I said, so you practice incest, right? Because that's what they was doing. <laughs> Not only the Africans, the Europeans did it to all that royal stuff because they didn't want to mix their blood. With you know, with the peasants, you know, regular folks, so they kept it, kept it in house. They did the same thing in Europe too. I said, y'all nasty. You know, these people sleeping. You know, sons were sleeping with their daughters. Uh, fathers were getting their daughters pregnant. You know, all that crazy, crazy stuff. Matter of fact, what they say, uh, uh, son kill their father so they can marry the mother. Crazy stuff. The raw people doing crazy stuff. I know, no. no. And then when you think about some of those ancient people, they was doing some crazy stuff. They was into human sacrifice and all kinds of crazy stuff. I said, no, 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 no. You can be an African all year. Go ahead and do that. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do that. I want to make this point, and maybe you brothers want to comment on it too before we split, about this, this uh, sister. She's a judge um, being nominated for the Supreme Court or whatever. Me personally, I'm not excited about it. It's it's nice, I guess, whatever. I would rather have my own country, my own something that I can control the hell with the Supreme Court. I don't give a damn. And I also do understand that she's her mentality, she don't give a damn about black people like that anyway. So I don't know what you're getting excited about. It's just symbolism. Ooh, a black woman on the Supreme Court. She don't give a damn about you. She don't give a damn about the community. Like Clarence Thomas, who's already in there. Yeah, he don't you know, you know he don't care nothing about no black folks or whatever. He ain't never shown no love, you know, just because it's a black face there. Trump loving the Caucasian white. Yeah. On top of that, go ahead, your brother, skip me. Yeah, well, I, all I want to say, because we was talking about, was it you or, or, or Denzel, you was talking about uh, the brothers. Oh, you just talked about that, Talib. You was talking about how some of the brothers don't know how to step to the sisters and they reject the sisters or whatever, and they right. or, or, the, or the or the brothers. Them, yeah. Keep them, yeah. Now see, look. Now a lot of pro blackity black married that white man, whatever. You know, that's the first thing they would say. But if you look at this sister, you and I both know, in our hood among us, she's not gonna be Miss Beautiful. She's not gonna be one of the first one. Damn man, I got to deal with that. <laughs> you know, you you, she, you can you can look at her. First of all, she's too dark skinned. And even these pro-black folks talking about blackly black stuff, they're not gonna want nobody with dark skin like that. All right, I don't care what they say out their mouth. They're not gonna like her because she's dark skinned and she's not really that attractive like. And she's probably was a nerd back in the day. She ain't giving up no panties like that. Because she's 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 focused on her work trying to make something of herself. You know, you want the panties. She's a like, damn I'm trying to stay where you get your horny ass away from me. You know. So we already know that so the thing about a lot of these caucasian guys you know they they play the nice role you know they come up there and say some nice thing what they say you get more bee i mean more yeah more bees with honey than vinegar so what is she gonna do you got the brothers they gonna give her no play because she's a nerd she's a nurse she ain't giving up no patties plus they don't believe she's all that attractive you know but here goes a white guy that accept her exactly for what she is he don't care about the clothes she's wearing, don't care about what the kind of car she's driving, or none of that kind of good stuff. And he's he's gonna talk to her kind and treat her like a human being. So you're gonna fault her for going with kindness, then your damn ragged ass stuck up, man. She ain't good enough for me. I I you hear brothers say it all the time. I, I bang her, you know, I, I bang her. Ain't, 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 ain't no problem. I, 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 I do that, but you know, they ain't she ain't my kind of. You know, I wouldn't take her home to mama or nothing like that. <laughs> and it goes the same thing with the with the with the sisters too. You know, you got a certain brother that you whatever. And we live in a society where people 
they looking for love. Like me, I can be alone. I've never been. I, I, matter of fact, I wish I had just left the whole love thing alone. I just stayed to my damn self. I've been more cool. I can hang, but a lot of people can't hang being alone. They look, they have this idea of a husband and the picket fence and the dog and the children and all that kind of stuff. I've never had that picture in my life anyway, so I don't trip off of it. But you do have that. And here goes a white guy. And he and he's probably doing real good economically too. Got a nice house. He dressed, do whatever. And he's supporting her in what she's doing. So she's going to go in that direction. You can't, how the hell are you going to condemn somebody for doing what they feel is in the best interest of themselves? I have nothing to do with that. My only problem is, sister, could you help a brother out? Can you help your people out a little bit? I understand your situation. Why you just got to go all the way out? But then look how Negroes treat each other. Look how, they, how we talk. Who want to be part of that? And, and you yeah. know, I say I say that to what you're saying, can, you can't really blame her. Yeah, can't really blame So just like I said, just like you can't blame the brother from going the other way, you can't really blame the sister from going the other way. And this vice versa in that situation. And that's where a line got to be drawn that on that note. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, but that, that's, that's true. You cannot condemn nobody because somebody else shown them the kindness that you could have did but you didn't do, you didn't want them until you seen them with somebody. Now all of a sudden, now she's supposed to be, you could have had her. She probably, we probably could have had her first. But she ain't good enough for she's too damn black. She's ugly. You bang her, but that's all you want her for. Now you, now you mad because because the, 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 the white guy got her or the Mexican or the Chinese guy got her. You didn't even want her like that. See, we, we tripping. You, 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 you tripping. But the main thing, all that's not even top priority. All that means nothing when you're a damn slave anyway, because when it's all said and done, you don't have no kind of control. You have no power over nothing. You don't control the damn thing. Who give a damn about what you think or what you like? Do you think that woman care about what Negroes like or what they think? She don't give a damn. Caring about you, what you talking about. She got hers. I got mine. She'll send your ass to jail for forever and won't even think about it tomorrow. Because you know these people, if a Negro uh, hurt them or whatever, they ain't going to forget that. And they'll blame every Negro they see. What you in here for, snap, nap? Well, well, ma'am, I'm, I'm just here. They said that I, I'm a domestic terrorist. Yeah. Well, they said, well, they said ma'am, I'm, I'm a domestic terrorist. You know, and... 10 years, 20 years, pow. <laughs> you know how that, that goes. A lot of them black cops. Sure do. Sure will. They don't forget, you know, you was a, you was a nerd or whatever in, 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 in school or whatever, and these guys bother you or whatever. You become a police officer, and you take it out on, on any Negro that you see out in the street. That is true. That now, is so chances are she's going to be on the Supreme Court. And that symbolism, a lot of Negroes, oh, happy day. It's, what a joy. She's a black woman. She's black and she's a woman on the Supreme Court. Yay! Yay! <laughs> but it's nothing but symbolism. Because she, she don't give a damn about, about black folks, soul people. And when it's all said and done, it's our fault. Look how we treat each other. Look how we talk about people. I don't care about your, your husband, ma'am. I don't care about that. But these Negroes will get on her and talk about... You think she don't watch the internet? And these Negroes, she with that white man. You think she's not looking at all that? Yeah, wait till I get a chance to get your happy ass. Talk about my man. You, you, they, these people are stupid. They just stupid. They don't... Allow movement on some legislation to, to really push our progress back as people behind that. Absolutely. We we run our mouth so much. What what they say is it's an old saying, we cut our nose off despite our face. We we burn bridges because we got a big mouth and we're arrogant. 
How are you going to be arrogant as you are and you don't have nothing? You should be humble as possible. You don't even have nothing and running your damn mouth. These blackity black, that black power, pan-African, all that kind of stuff makes things worse for us. And you, we have people that actually listen to that garbage. You're making things worse for us because you don't have nothing. There are people in, in positions that can change things for us that might do something for us, but they won't do it because mm, fool, because you talk, you talking stupid. I would say this, right. huh? Sister Maxine Waters used to be uh, very prevalent in the black community. Yeah. Speaking out on certain issues. Yes, she was. Well, well you don't hear her like that no more. Well, she's older too. How old is she? She's yeah. she's, she's not. She's, she's probably in her seventies, eighties. Yeah, she's not. Still. Mm -hmm. You 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 made a good point. Yeah. So you know, people forget that. Maybe that's why she probably just said, Well, what the hell with these Negroes? They ain't gonna get behind me. Absolutely. Help them. Help them. They don't want to help themselves. They right. Let them go to hell. <laughs> you know, yeah. So you're right. But you know what I'm saying? Negroes get out here, you know, and we already is bad enough. We are already an emotional people anyway. You see what I'm saying? Right. So at least you say something, the, the, the least thing you say that's negative toward any black person that's in a position to do something about our plight in this country, you only making it worse for us by running your mouth all recklessly. Like yeah. That. Sounding, they're trying to sound tough, whatever, and try to sound big and bad and then whatever. You don't, right. you, you don't have nothing. Now, a rattlesnake can get big and bad because he got some poison for you. <laughs> you know, you can talk. If a rattlesnake was a person, they can talk some real stuff. Here you are, barely got skin on your hand, talking like you really got something going on. All thing, and all thing these people can do while you're running your mouth, they can cut you. They can take you off face Facebook. They can cut your electricity off. They can cut your gas off anytime they feel like it. Cut your food off. You have nothing. You're not in a position to 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 make no demands on nobody or anything. And you 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 making you making unnecessary enemies when you don't have to, because you got a big ass mouth. Brother, I, I just want to say, let this be the last thing I say. Yeah. Uh, you know this last total thing I got to say. Linked to what Brother Denzel, I heard Brother Denzel speaking about. As long as these pro black and black folks on social media keep going at it with each other over these frivolous debates and yeah. all this other stuff, they be going at each other uh, over, you know, eventually, like Brother Denzel said, somebody going to get a bullet put in them. Because yeah. I can already hear. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to speak on nobody particular, but. People are already talking about, uh, you know what I'm saying, pulling up and somebody come to their city. And, right. You know, they going to have a uh, nigga, niggas waiting on them and this and that to do this and that. You know, that sounds like some straight up gangster five stuff. I'll be here, but I'm going to just leave it at that because this is social media. But, you know, I'm yeah. just saying, you know, he's right. He, he's 1,000% right, you know, with this so-called, what's the point of this uh, black conscious uh, social media uh, stuff, when, when you're not really trying to do nothing to really liberate our people anyway, all you're doing is or using social media as a platform right, to spill your uh, ignorance. <laughs> Why don't y'all just, you know, get off social media and, and get on the ground and hack the week, like y'all say y'all willing to do. You see what I'm saying? Right, exactly. And they go. They the politics and so-called pro-black consciousness when y'all really ain't trying to really do nothing to liberate nobody. 
just want to get on there and run your mouth and stuff. So now, you know, uh, you're using social media as a platform, you know, not only to, uh, to, 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 to exaggerate your uh, gangster uh, behavior over, over, but also to incriminate yourself. Because don't think you being asleep by talking the way you're talking. Because if something happened to somebody, the first thing the white folks going to do is go on social media and listen to who was talking. Because you know they know how to uh, pin everything together. Yeah. You know, when they trying to put a case on somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they, and, they, and, they, and they hear what you said, and they link you right to that situation. Next thing you know, you're sitting in a jail cell facing life. Mm. All over something stupid that could have been avoided. Absolutely. You don't like or disagree with what somebody said or over some debate crap and all that kind of stuff. So now, you you know, but yes, this is going to end up turning into, uh, you know, like they said, how, how the Crips and Bloods came about. At first, they were black organizations. Working with people like the Panthers and the Snick Park back in the sixties, you mm-hmm. know. But 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 they ended up becoming street gangs. The same thing like with the Vice Lords and the uh, Black Gangs of the Cyprus. They first started off as black community uh, organizations in the sixties, and then that's what it came to. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's what we what we see in this pro black conscious stuff on social media going. We see that going in a similar direction. And like he said, what's going to end up happening is, is that when somebody get a bullet put in them, ain't no, ain't no turning back. And with that said, you know, uh, thanks again for letting yes, me sit on this panel. And peace out. Yeah. Um, Tahaka Bay said he had some folks pull up on, to his house. Didn't he say that, Denzel? I think he huh? said that he actually had people pull up to his house. Really? Yeah, that's... But that's but, uh, unfortunately, but fortunately, you know, nothing went down, but it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time, because these niggas acting so crazy, and they, they're so emotional over stuff. It's just a matter of time. And, and uh, one more thing about that. They, uh... Like what I found out now is uh you know like it it may get to the point you know where they may I don't want it to be like that but they may start other gang members may start asking you hey you are you conservative are you ados are you all this mm-hmm. and if they do then something may happen to you and that's that's what they do with the gangs and stuff too. Like, oh, where are you from? They ask you that. Like, what set you part of? Like, are you from right. out north or that? And I don't want that to happen. And that's what I, I think. I fear that that's where all this stuff is going to start heading. It's only a matter of time before they get into it. Like, let's say if Blexit goes and try to get some GDs to convert mm-hmm. to to uh to be conservatives. I'm telling guns are being pulled out. <laughs> they, they, they don't play. And mm. I just, I don't want, I just don't want none of that to happen. But I fear that's yes, where it's going. That's it. You know, I'm gonna let it go. You know. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we're getting ready. We're gonna go ahead and let it go. I want to thank Brother Denzel. Always, you always welcome to come back, brother. I'm always send you an invite if you get a chance. You always come by, and then. Uh, and, uh, Give us a little bit of your wisdom because it's much needed and everybody enjoys what you have to bring to the session. Also, brother, to live. And uh, I enjoy the conversation and everybody enjoyed the conversation. I want to thank everybody in the chat room, Dickens of Reality and Mims and everybody that uh, was in the chat room. Those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast later, I thank you so much. And we're going to catch you on the, on the flip. As Don Canillas used to always say as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. Y'all have a peaceful night. Yep. <laughs>